Luke chapter number 2, extremely familiar. Wouldn't it be a blessing if Habakkuk was as familiar to you as Luke chapter 2? Hmm? Just thought I'd throw that in. Verse number 1, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. Our hearts have been greatly uplifted tonight. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you, Lord, for the good testimonies. Thank you for the sweet spirit that's in the air here tonight. And thank you for being a good God. Lord, I'm glad I know the real and true meaning of why we celebrate Christmas. And Father, I'm thankful that uh, one uh, dark night many years ago, you chose to come into this world. And Lord, you came into this world to go to an old rugged cross and pay the sin debt for all mankind. And God, we bless your holy name. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, you would bless each and every one that minded the Spirit of God here tonight. I pray for those that gave prayer requests, Jackson for Tyler and uh, Miss Janet for uh, you watching over her brother, and, Lord, any other requests that were made. God, you'd move upon them and your will would be done. I pray for those that didn't offer up a request, but their hearts are broken for someone in their family tonight. Lord, I pray for that need that was brought to me right before service. And Lord, you'd orchestrate and work out that need. And God, there are others that, Lord, uh, would long to see family members in church or neighbors in church or co-workers in church. And God, there are others that, Lord, would love to see their spouse or, oh Lord, uh, their children maybe back in church. And God, I pray that, Lord, uh, the Spirit of God, who's not limited, would do a work and we'd see these folks' hearts mended by seeing these folks in church. And God, I pray you'd do a great work. Now, Father, help us tonight from the Scriptures. I pray you'd be glorified and magnified. I pray your people would be edified and helped. I know many of them have worked hard this week. I know many of them have been distressed and faced obstacles and hindrances. And God, I pray you'd give them victory. Uh, Lord, I am reminded, several testified that, Lord, living a Christian life can be hard. And I'm reminded you said that all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. And Lord, we do face some hardness, but God, I'm glad we never face it alone. God, I'm glad you're always there, and God, you're always a present help in time of need. So help us this very night. I pray again that you'd be highly exalted, lifted up. And the Lord, we're thankful to the two uh, young ladies that got saved Sunday night. Lord, maybe there's somebody here tonight unsaved. And Lord, I pray if that's the case, you'd convict them of their sin, that God, we'd see them birth into the family of God. Now, Father, get glory to your name. We'll bless you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen and amen. I want you to notice, first of all, the certain time. It said in verse number 1, and it came to pass in those days. Uh, now, friend, you mark it down. Uh, we don't know the exact date, but we do know some 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born of a virgin in this world. Uh, you can mark it down, there was a certain day that it came. Uh, what we're saying is not a myth. Uh, what we're saying is not an exaggeration. Uh, what we're saying is not some story written down uh, by somebody to make some money on. Uh, what we're talking about is the fact uh, 
that almighty God left glory uh, and stepped into the womb of a virgin maid uh, and came forth through the birth canal uh, uh, to be the Savior of the world. Uh, now can I say uh, many things that are celebrated this time of year uh, 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 are celebrated out of tradition, uh, not celebrated because they're scriptural. Mm, can I say a lot of things you hear sung, uh, a lot of things that people do, uh, it's more of a heritage thing or a tradition thing or a religious thing rather than a Bible thing. Uh, I hate to bust people's bubble, but I, I do it anyway. Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. The shepherds wouldn't have had uh, their sheep in the field watching them by night in December. He was probably born in August or September. It wasn't December 25th. Say, why do we celebrate Christmas on December 25th? Well, there's a pagan ho a holiday called the Winter Solace. And that's what is really being celebrated this week. Now, boy, that went over like, like real good. Do you all remember when there was a fellow by the name of Cornelius that sent for Peter to come and preach to him and his household uh, and Peter didn't want to go and the Lord uh, 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 gave him a, a dream just prior to that three times about uh, 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 rising and eating all different kinds of animals which were against the law uh, 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 and he kept arguing with the Lord because that's what Peter did uh, 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 but uh, 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 then uh, these men came and, and Peter realized uh, the dream was about God wanted me to take the gospel and preach uh, uh, to folks that weren't Jews they were Grecian and Peter went, uh, and uh, Peter preached, uh, and Cornelius and his household believed, uh, and Peter was amazed that the Holy Ghost fell on them like he did the Jews. It's an amazing thing. I think it's around Acts 15. Uh, but what you'll find uh, after that is Cornelius goes back to his homeland. Cornelius didn't have a Bible. Cornelius did not have a a heritage like that has been talked about around here tonight uh, about being raised in the synagogue knowing the truths uh, of the promises handed down to Abraham uh, and the law given to Moses uh, and all the prophets and what they had preached he didn't know any of that he heard one message what if everything you stood for tonight was based on the first message you ever heard in your life that's all he had but he went back to his homeland where they were pagan. Now he's a new believer. He can't wait to tell them the thing that he's heard. So he did a good thing. He told everybody the message of the gospel. And folks started getting saved. But then some took the message of the gospel and they joined it with the message of paganism. 300 years later, a religion was formed at the Council of Trent in 321 A.D. Now they say that Peter was the first pope. If that was the case, he would have been very old, about 400 years. We know Peter wasn't the first pope because Peter died almost 250 years before this. Say, so what happened? This religion was formed. It was a religion of Rome. It's what we now know as the Catholic faith. Do you realize most of the traditions that you know come from the Catholic faith? Do we not call it Christmas or Christ Mass? We don't call it worship Christ or Christ worship. Hmm? Can I say a lot of the traditions come from jolly old Saint Nick? Can I say a lot of the songs that are sung, old Tannebaum, old Tannebaum, worshiping a tree? They're not biblical. Now I can take you in Jeremiah and show you where they would decorate trees and they'd uh, worship the tree and bow down to them. Now listen, it wasn't a beautiful Douglas fir or, or a, a, a balsam fir or whatever. What was the tree? They were what we would call totem poles. 
They had carved images on them. They were stripped of all their limbs and stripped of all the leaves. Uh, uh, they were uh, 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 planted in a grove. Uh, these were these tall uh, uh, poles that had all these carvings of faces and animals and all that on them. And they decorate them with silver and gold. And they would offer up sacrifice and worship the trees. They was the pre-runner to tree huggers. Thought you'd like that. Just occurred to me, thought I'd share it. But you see, most of what people are doing, the giving of gifts and all that, they'll say that's because of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Let me help you with something. The star was not over Bethlehem the night Jesus was born. The wise men didn't come to the manger. That happens in Matthew chapter 2. Read Luke chapter 2. Find me wise men. Find me a star. Jesus was probably getting close to two years of age by the time the wise men showed up. Because Herod uh, 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 slaughtered all the men, ch uh, male children two years and younger when the wise men didn't come back and tell him where, he where they found him. What led the wise men to Jesus? The star. Again, a lot of things that we embrace are not scriptural, not biblical. So, preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying there was a certain time when Jesus did come. And a lot of the hoopla and the commercialism and everything that we uh, want to attach to it really isn't attachable. But take no doubt in the fact Jesus came. There was a certain time. Notice there was a criteria for taxing. Look again in verse number 3. It said, And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. You see... When Caesar sent out the decree for all the world to be taxed, everyone had to go to the city of their lineage to be taxed. There was a criteria for the taxing. Do you think that was by any accident or chance? Micah 5.2 lets us know that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. Uh -oh, they had to get Mary and Joseph from Nazareth to Bethlehem. How would God work that all out? He's God. We see the criteria for taxing. We see the certain time. But notice the critical timing. Look in verse number 5. They were to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. If the tax would have happened five months earlier, Jesus wouldn't have been in Bethlehem at the right time, would he? Mm -mm. If it had been five months later, he'd already been born. You see, God knows what he's doing. We see the critical timing of the taxing was right on time. And can I say God's always right on time? I want to preach on this little thought tonight. Stealing one of the traditions. Really stealing the tradition that started most of what people celebrate right now. I want to preach on twas the night before Jesus came. You know, most everything that people believe and celebrate started with was, was the night be, be, before Christmas. When that poem became popular, that's what started shaping people's thinking about Christmas. But I want to preach on Twas the night before Jesus came. Can I say the night before Jesus came, there was vexation throughout the whole world. Look again at verse number 1 came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Rome ran the world. And Rome sent out a decree that everyone in the known world would have to pay a tax. Everyone was vexed. I don't know to you. Do everybody enjoy paying taxes? We love you, Miss Billy. Hate your job. IRS could go away tomorrow, and it wouldn't upset me at all. Huh? 
I mean, I, I, I'm thankful for the IRS got Billy liberated from West Virginia and got her here to Kentucky. We love her. Can't imagine church without her. But I could imagine life without the IRS. Huh? But listen, nobody enjoys taxation. Taxation has always been a burden on the backs uh, of the common man. Do you think Bill Gates cares about taxes? He can afford it. Hmm? You know who cares? People that can't afford it. People that are living week to week. People that struggle to put food on the table. Struggle to meet their bills. Uh, taxation is an oppression. Uh, and notice the time he came, uh, uh, the first time the world was under oppression. Uh, I've got news. Uh, 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 hey, it's no mistake or accident uh, that all this pandemic is affecting the world. It could be uh, we're on the brink of his second coming. Uh, it could be he's about ready to come again. Uh, hey, no one was looking for him then, and very few are looking for him tonight. Uh, there was vexation throughout the world. Isn't it amazing that a virus designed in a lab has affected the whole world for the last 20 months? How's that shutting everything down for 15 days to slow the curve working out for you? Mm. And isn't it amazing that mashed potato brains Biden said when he got elected he'd end COVID? And isn't it amazing how much that the press and the media and the government officials have pushed for the vaccines? Uh, again, I'm not anti-vaccine. Uh, if you got a vaccination, that's between you uh, and your doctor. I really don't care. Uh, but I am against uh, uh, the government telling you you have to put something in your body. Uh, but isn't it amazing uh, that America's approaching 70% uh, of a vaccination rate uh, and yet the COVID numbers are still climbing? Uh, and isn't it amazing uh, when they can't uh, uh, do away with the narrative, they just automatically invent another variant? Uh, uh, and this new Omicron variant, uh, that's all you hear is Omicron, 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 what you do don't hear uh, is the facts about Omicron uh, that the symptoms are mild. No more than the common cold. It's downgraded. But you don't hear that. Now they say, but if you're vaccinated, you won't die from it. I got news for you. Nobody's going to die till Jesus says you're going to die. Mm. But of course, we know the truth. And the truth will set you free. People in darkness listen to Joe Biden. He don't even know what he's saying. Why would I listen to him? Uh, but can I say there was vexation throughout the world the night before Jesus came. And I promise you, the night before he comes again, there'll be vexation throughout the world. And things aren't going to get better. I've been telling you for 20 years things are going to get worse. And I say was the night before Jesus came. There was vexation throughout the world. Can I say secondly, the night before Jesus came, virtue had waxed cold. You have to understand, Israel had had no light for nearly 400 years. From Malachi to Matthew is almost 400 years. Uh, God had not sent them many prophets. Uh, God had not sent them many messengers. Uh, they had no light. They had no message till John the Baptist came. Uh, uh, there was no open preaching to help them. The definition, definition of virtue is this, moral excellence. Virtue means the practice of moral duties from a sincere love for God and His law. There was no virtue. It had waxed cold. Uh, folks didn't love God and His law. Uh, they hadn't heard of it in 400 years. Can I say, you're hard-pressed to find people in this world that love God and His law. Mm. Not a lot of virtue. I dare say, you'll find more moral excellence in America than any other country in the world. There are more people that are good-natured in America than anywhere else in the world. Uh, 
uh, uh, just look at what recently happened down there in southern Kentucky with the storms. Uh, I, I believe my understanding was Beachwood wanted to fill up a semi-trailer uh, uh, of uh, uh, water and supplies to help them folks. Uh, but instead of one, they got eight. Wasn't that the truth? Uh, got five. Got five trailer loads to go down there. Why? Because there are people uh, who give in time of need. There are people who care about other people in America. This time of year, there are all kinds of folks and news stories come out of a need and folks will break their neck to, uh, uh, to help meet that need because America has good-natured people. But America doesn't have people that love God and His law. If we did, we wouldn't have the people sitting in Congress we've got sitting there. Mm. We'd vote different. Now, I kind of threw off on Catholics a minute ago I'm here to tell you, true, devout Catholics are against abortion. True, devout Catholics are for their faith and their church. Joe Biden does not represent a true, devout Catholic. Isn't it amazing people like him and Pelosi, they'll run to their Catholic faith when it's election time, but they live like the devil all the other times. Hmm? Most Catholic, I, I, most that I've known in my lifetime, they don't live like that crowd. What can I say? Even amongst Baptist people, you don't find people who love God and His Word in this day and age. Thank God for this crowd around here that loves preaching. Right. Hmm? Everywhere I go, when folks, I invite folks to come, and, and they'll <laughs> invariably they say, Preacher, how much time do I got to preach? I say, Till you're done. I said, one thing about that crowd up there, if you stay in the book, they're going to stay with you. They love preaching. Mm. Mm. Uh, it's, it's funny, Brother Jim. I've had people say, well, what have you used to build that church? I said, well, I didn't build it, except the Lord built it, they that labor, labor in vain. I said, but you know what's, what's been used? Preaching. Because if preaching don't get the job done, it ain't going to get done anyway. All you got is fluff if it's not built on preaching in the solid rock of Jesus. Hmm? It's amazing. Brother Larry Seals was here Sunday. He gave us one of the greatest compliments I've heard in a long time. He said, when Brother Doug went to that church, nobody wanted it. Now everybody break their neck to have it because how good God's been up there. Hmm? That's a good compliment. Huh? We got a great church. Brother Greg Phillips tells everybody our church is one of the 1% top churches in America. And I'm thinking, Brother Greg, you've only been to three. How do you know? I'm telling you, the night before Jesus came, virtue had waxed cold. Even Jesus said, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? He comes back, he's looking for faith, he's not going to find much. Hmm? He taught that if you had faith, you can say to a mountain, be thou cast into the sea, and it would happen. I don't see many mountains being moved. Can I say thirdly, on the night before Jesus came, Many had become victims of the wicked one. Hmm. Satan is hard at work. He's hard at work tonight. And can I say this? He never misses a church service. Oh, he's not omnipresent. He's not at all the churches, but he's got one of his imps there. He's doing everything he can to divide and disrupt, and distract what God's wanting to do. I got to thinking about how folks were victimized. Some were victimized by offering futile sacrifices. See, God's more interested in obedience than a sacrifice. It amazes me what people will do. They'll jump through hoops and sacrifice to try and please God. Do you ever know some of these feel-good churches around here have nine New uh, Christmas Eve services? Huh? God bless that, that, that crowd. I mean... You got nine piano players, or one's got to show up to all nine services. Oh, they don't have piano players. Oh, excuse me. Huh? You got the same preacher preaching all. Oh, they don't. They pipe him in on a video screen. Huh? Huh? But anyway, can you imagine nine services trying to get God's attention? Hmm? Reminds me of that crowd that was cutting themselves and jumping on the on the uh, altar there on Mount Carmel. Hmm? I get asked all the time, "How many Christmas Eve services did you have?" I said, well, does it fall on Wednesday or Sunday? No, nope, none. 
By the way, next year, I guess Christmas will be on Sunday. Don't even ask. We're having church. We don't call off church anyway, but I guarantee you we're not calling off church on a, on a holiday that supposedly represents the Lord. Do we call off church on Easter? Preacher, that's sacrilegious. So is it calling it off on Christmas? We got presents to open. Open them the day before, open them later that evening. I don't care. We're having church. I've made people mad over that over the years too. Folks are victimized by offering futile sacrifice. There are folks who are good people who go to these places that call themselves churches. They do everything they're told to do and everything they're doing is in vain. And they don't know the difference. Shame on us. We're to be shining the light so they can see the truth. There wasn't any truth in that day. They were victimized by Satan. They was victimized by, off, uh, by obtaining a false sense of security. How many people have you witnessed to and they tell you they go to church? Now, here's something that'll help you. I, I, I've, I've done this for years. When somebody says, well, I go to so-and-so church, I say, well, who's the pastor there now? If they can't tell you, they don't go to church there. You'd be amazed. Uh, mm, uh, what is it? Uh, mm, uh, uh, mm, uh. I have been bad before. I've made up a name. I say, is so-and-so still there? Is brother so-and-so still there? Yep. I'm thinking, you're crazy. Is brother Clem Hopper still there? That's him, yep. But there are folks, they'll tell you because they go to church, or they'll tell you because they've been baptized, or they've baptized as an infant or because of what money they've given, or what this they've done, or what they have a false sense of security. The only people going to heaven, those have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. But he's victimized people. Now I want to tell you something. Some people, that they're so hung up on that, you can't help them. They've convinced themselves, and the Bible says, as men think it, so is he. And when they've convinced themselves, they're okay. The only one who can unconvince them is the Holy Ghost. I thought about this. He victimizes people by an order of fellowship and with sin. Did I say the Bible says there's pleasure in sin for the se for a season? You know why a lot of people are caught up in sin? Sin can be fun for a while. Sin feels good smells good, it tastes good, it just feels right, sin's okay for a while. But you see, there is a price that comes with that. And folks are all for the sin, they just don't want to have to pay the price. We know ultimately for the wages of sin is death. But there are folks that have embraced the order of fellowship and with sin. There's a lot of people got the mentality, I'll get right with God just before I die. The problem is they just don't think they're going to die tonight. And many do. So they become victims of the wicked one. Right before Jesus was born. There's a lot of folks tonight that are enslaved by Satan and don't even know it. He controls the narrative of their life. What I can't understand with all that's going on with the pandemic and all, if you just listen to the media, I'm thinking, who believes this stuff? I mean, doesn't anybody have any common sense anymore? But see, people have been blinded. People are in bondage. You know why so many of us can see? We've been set free. We can see through that junk. But you... I'm amazed at how many supposedly smart people are so ignorant to believe this junk. How many doctors buy into it? Oh, it's real. I know there's a virus. But I'm no doctor. But I've been around long enough to know there's no cure for a virus. It has to run its course. All you can ever do with a virus is treat the symptoms. 
You got a runny nose, you take some Sudafed or decongestant. You got a cough, you take cough medicine. You got a fever, you take some Advil or something to get your fever to break. I mean, you just treat the symptoms. The virus has to run its course. But oh, the vaccine cured the virus. You're a fool if you believe that. That's stupid. Smart medical doctors that know you can't cure a virus will now tell you, you've got to get the vaccine. You know why they tell you you got to get the vaccine? Just look and see how much these companies or these viruses have made this year with the vaccines. And if they're making that much money, you know how much of it's going in these politicians' pockets so that they'll keep pumping it. Didn't cost you anything extra. Huh? You see, the wicked one's got people bound. He always has. Could be Jesus is coming again. I got to thinking, the night before Jesus came, there was a vessel that was worn out. Look again at verse number 5. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being, what's that word? Great with child. That means about ready to pop. Huh? Verse 6, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Now listen. Miss Annette was the most joyful pregnant lady I've ever known. She loves being a mom. She loved being a mama. She loved knowing that one was on the way. Even in the dog days of August when it's 100 degrees and she was out here with Jordan, she didn't complain. She never did. Huh? What was it, three weeks before Sydney came or four? We got under two? Two weeks before Sydney came. We hopped on an airplane and went to Orlando. You should have seen the guy's face that was sat next to her on the plane. So, well, how far along are you? Oh, about eight and a half months. The doctor told her not to get on the plane, but she knew her body better than the doctor. But even then, it was hot, man. Something into June, it was hot in Orlando. She didn't complain about that, but I want to tell you something. Every pregnant lady, about eight months, she's ready. She's carried it long enough. It's kicked her long enough. It's sat on her, her bladder long enough. It's hurt her back long enough. She's waddled like a duck long enough. She's just ready. Now get a hold of this. Here's Mary. She's come from Nazareth. To Bethlehem. Now I didn't look up and see how far that was. But in order to get there, Clint, she's either walked or she's been on the back of a donkey or a camel. Now I've never been on the back of a camel. Doesn't look too comfortable. And I've been on some horses, but I've never been on the donkey. But I guarantee you I've never been pregnant, never going to get pregnant. I identify as a redneck male. But I'm here to tell you that could not have been comfortable for her. And by the time she's there, she is worn out. Look around at God's people. Most of us are worn out. We've carried our burdens. We, we are not of this world, but we're in this world. We've got to deal with all the things going on in this world that we know that are not right. We know that abortion's not right. We know that part of our tax dollars for so long has paid for it. We know that a lot that goes on in this world, we're totally against. Uh, we're against the liquor crowd. We're against the drug crowd. Isn't it amazing uh, how much uh, uh, attention that uh, uh, fentanyl and, and drug overdoses got until COVID came? Uh, COVID shows up. You don't hear about the drug problem anymore. Uh, but you go over here to the courthouse, still about 90% uh, of every court case has to deal with heroin uh, and folks that are involved in drugs. Uh, 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 friends, we 
face these things. Uh, we face drunk drivers hitting and killing people. Uh, we face all the problems and ills of sin. Uh, we face the sodomite crowd all the time. Uh, uh, we face uh, the shack up crowd all the time. Uh, we face the anti-Bible crowd all the time. Uh, and friend, you're facing it and facing it and facing it. Uh, are you tired of being ridiculed by your family? Tired of being ridiculed by society? Uh, and folks, look around. God's people are just wore out. Most churches, the preacher can't get anybody to go out and knock on doors because everybody's wore out. Most folks don't come back on Wednesday night or Sunday night because they're so thin stressed and so thin uh, on time and they're so wore out they don't have time for God anymore. Folks are wore out. Could be Jesus is on his way. Mm -hmm. Thought about this lastly. The night before Jesus came. There's vexation throughout the world. Virtue had waxed cold. Many had become victims of the wicked one. There was a vessel that was worn out. Night before Jesus came, victory was on its way. Hmm? He did come. And with him came healing in his wings. Hmm? The wonderful counselor Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, did show up just like Isaiah said he would, born of a virgin. Hmm? He came. Victory came. Huh? He brought light to a dark world. He brought life to a di dying world. He brought love to a world that forgot about love. Uh, and friends, he brought liberty to those that were held captive. He came. I got good news. He's coming. Say, when's he coming, Brother Doug? Could be tonight. Could be tomorrow. I don't know. I just see a whole lot of similarities in this day that happened in that day. And he said, just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall the son of the com coming of the Son of Man be. Huh? Can I say everything that happened in Noah's day, all man's thought was evil continually all the time. They were giving in marriage, eating and drinking. They was caring for themselves, and themselves only didn't care anything about God. He's coming. Wouldn't that be the greatest Christmas present? We open it in glory. Uh, could be. Could be before New Year's. Could be before February, before Valentine's Day. Could be before Mother's Day. I don't know when he's coming. Anybody tells you they are, mark them, they're a liar. But I do know he's coming. Just as if you'd have looked at Mary and seen she was out to here, you knew she's about ready to deliver a child. And friends, you can look at the signs and see this thing's about ready to pop. He's a coming. So if you're tired, just keep pressing on. He's coming. Yeah. If you're weary, just keep pressing on. He's a-coming. Hey, you're struggling, just keep pressing on. He's a-coming. It'll be all right. He knows the way you take. And when you come forward, you'll come forth like gold, friend. So just, just, keep, just keep pressing on. Just keep looking to Him. Just keep being a light. Just keep loving people. Just keep telling folks about Jesus and how good He's been to you. He's coming. Hmm? Uh, what a blessing to see them two young girls get saved Sunday night. Who else might he want to save? That's the only reason they hadn't come yet. They're still waiting to save that last one. I'm not a Calvinist, but I do know there's going to be a final one gets in. And then the father's going to say, go get your bride, and he's a coming, and we're going. And I don't buy into this if he tarries his coming. He's not tearing his coming. I mean, the instant the father gets the twinkle in the eye to go get the bride, he's coming. He's been waiting 2,000 years to come and get us. Uh, he can't wait to actually embrace us. He can't wait to show us what he's went to prepare. He's coming. Uh, Miss Annette and I was dating. I'd go without sleep just to see her. I was working full-time, third shift in a fiberglass factory. I was going to college full-time in the mornings. Uh, and uh, if there was any chance I could to get to see her, man, I was on my way. Hmm? Nobody, you know. 
my mama didn't say, well, just wait a little while and then go see her. No, as soon as I got out of school, I was on my way. Hmm. Huh? Couldn't wait to see her. Huh? Huh? I didn't even know how much I loved her, but I loved her. Now I got a better idea how much I love her. I still can't wait to see her. Hmm? By the way, Tara's got a great philosophy for you. Just talk to her after service. Ask to deal with Mayberry and being single. You'll love it. It's good. Huh? I'm just trying to tell you. Jesus has waited 2,000 years for his bride. He's not going to tarry. He's a coming. Huh? He's coming after you, Joseph. He can't wait to see you. I mean, he sees you. He knows you, but he can't wait to put his arms around you and let you know he's heard all your prayers. Huh? He's coming. Hmm? Huh? Xander, every time you raise your hand, say, I want to thank God for saving me. Huh? He gets a smile on his face. One of these days, he's already saved your soul. One of these days, he's going to redeem your body. He can't wait for you to be like him. Hmm? Huh? He's a coming. So, dear child of God, when you look at this story and you see the shape the world was in, then all of a sudden the sky broke open. There were some angels heralding some good news, uh, giving an announcement that Jesus came. Can I say you look around this dark world and it won't be long there's going to be an angel step out with a trumpet and he's going to let her blow and there's going to be a shout and the voice of an archangel. I don't know what he's going to say. I kind of think because of Revelation 4 he's going to say come up hither and you know what's happening? Uh, hey, the dead in Christ shall rise and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together uh, 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 and we'll be caught up in the clouds and see the Lord. What a blessing uh, could come today. He's a coming. And somebody's going to get my iPad and say, what was that crazy preacher preaching on? It was the night before Jesus came. They won't get it then like they don't get it now, but he came. Hallelujah. So I wonder, are you ready? If you're not ready for Christmas, God help you. That's all I can say. If you're waiting on packages to come in the mail, or if you've got to go to the mall... Or you got to meet Bob and Sonny at the Walmart. God help you. Probably nothing on the shelves anyway because, you know, Master Taters Biden's uh, not got the ships in yet. But if you're not ready for Jesus to come, God really help you because he's coming. He's coming more certain than Christmas is coming. And, friend, you need to be ready for Jesus to come. You might be here, and God's been speaking to your heart. You might not be saved. Tonight would be a great night to get saved. be the greatest Christmas you ever had. You might be here, you might be saved, but you're just not what you should be. Tonight would be a good night to become what you should be. Hmm? You ought to just get in the altar and get right. Maybe you're here tonight, you're saved, you're where you're supposed to be, you're in the will of God, but you got a burden for somebody. You get in the altar and say, God, give me the words or send somebody to them that can speak truth to them open their eyes that they can be saved I don't know but I do know this Jesus is coming are you ready for him coming let's all stand Brother Miss Tina if you'll come Brother Clint if you'll get a song of invitation just a little simple thought tonight but if God spoke to your heart the altar's open if you're not saved once you come we'll take a Bible and show you how to be saved we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved you can be saved tonight it's, it's easy to be saved. You just got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Call on Him, repent, and ask Him to save you. He'll save you. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you that you came the first time. But, Lord, we're so excited about you coming again. So, Father, I pray for folks that aren't ready, that, Lord, we have an opportunity to reach. God, give us the zeal and the right words and the right opportunity to tell them about Jesus. God, I pray for those that, Lord, have heard the truth and rejected it, that, Lord, you give them another chance to get saved. God, I pray for anybody here tonight that's not saved, that, Lord, they just finally just surrender and give their heart and life to Jesus. God, I pray for somebody here tonight they're saved, but, Lord, they're not what they should be. God, I pray that, Lord, you just swell up big in their heart and help them to come and just be all that they can be in Christ. Lord, I just pray for every other need of every heart that God would be met 
in the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Bless this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.